Welcome to Smart Move to UK, your ultimate guide to unlock the business opportunities in the UK. Are you an entrepreneur striving to enter the new geographies and looking to expand your business presence globally? Look no further. UK has time and again proven to be a breeding ground for business excellences and innovation. From the bustling streets of London to charming countryside, the UK offers a rich tapestry of opportunities across various industries. Let's dive into the best businesses that thrive in this dynamic environment. Technology and Innovation The UK is at the forefront of technological advancement. From fintech to AI startups, the tech ecosystem here is brimming with creativity and innovation. E-commerce The digital marketplace knows no bounds and UK has embraced this trend wholeheartedly. Online retail and e-commerce platforms are redefining the way businesses is conducted. Creative Industries For the artist, Designers and creators, the UK offers a nurturing environment. The fashion, arts and entertainment sectors are flourishing like never before. Sustainability and green energy. As the world shifts towards sustainability, the UK stands tall with its commitment to renewable energy and eco-friendly practices. Clean tech ventures are making a lasting impact. Food and technology. Culinary entrepreneurs rejoice. The UK's diverse culture is reflected in its culinary landscape. From traditional pubs to fine dining, there's room for every taste. Healthcare and biotechnology. The UK's healthcare system is a breeding ground for groundbreaking medical innovation. Biotech startups are revolutionizing patient care and well-being. But wait, there's more. The UK isn't just a business hub. It's a gateway to global networking. With its international connection and strategic location, your business can connect with the world. So whether you are a visionary startup founder or a seasoned business magnet, the UK welcomes you to unleash your potential and rewrite the rules of success. The journey to establishing your business in the UK might seem complex, but fear not. Smart Move to UK is here to guide you at every step of your way. Our team of experts specialize in immigration and business solution ensure seamless transition to your new chapter of success. The best business in the UK awaits your passion and dedication. Are you ready to make your mark? UK is calling. Will you answer? Hi, I'm Jonathan Jay. On this video, hello and a warm welcome to everybody who is joining us today. Good day to everyone. I'm thrilled to welcome each and every one of you to this exciting and insightful webinar. And I'm so grateful for all these participants I see. They're from different places. I'm being said there's registration from Tamil Nadu, Hyderabad, Noida, um, Chennai, the Ethiopia, South Africa, Pondicherry, Dhaka, um, New Delhi, um, Mumbai, of course, and uh, we've got people from Wales as well. A very good day to participants from Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Bangalore, thank you so, so very much for this uh, overwhelming response that you've given. Today, we are here to embark on a journey of possibilities, exploring the vast opportunities that await you in expanding your business in the United Kingdom. So first and foremost, let me acknowledge the entrepreneurial spirit within each of you. The very fact that you're considering taking your business to the UK reflects your vision and drive to grow, succeed in the global market. 
Today we delve into the key aspects that will not only help you to understand why UK is a brilliant choice for business expansion, but also equip you with necessary knowledge to navigate through the legal immigration requirements seamlessly. But before that, let me introduce myself. I'm Falguni Vaiparik. I'm a solicitor at the Smart Move to UK, and I advise in UK immigration and nationality laws. I've been practicing for the last uh, 15 years and more and have represented clients in 26 plus countries. In this webinar, we're going to share experience in immigration law and expertise and guide you um, the business through legal through the legalities and international expansion that will be that we'll discuss today in this webinar. So as we begin this journey together, let's take a moment to reflect on the immense potential that UK holds for the business worldwide. The United Kingdom is a home to staggering 5.7 million small and mid-sized businesses representing a huge opportunity with rich and diverse business landscapes. Today, we're going to uncover those opportunities that are available for businesses who would want to set themselves up. So in this uh, webinar, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the benefits of expanding your business to the UK, the essential requirements of setting up the business, what are the different visa options available, what is the legal and immigration aspects that you need to consider and towards the end, we'll have a question answer session that will allow you to raise any specific questions that you have. And we are here to respond to those queries that you may have with regards to this particular presentation. So now let's take the moment on why expanding your business to UK is a strategic move. The UK offers an access to large and growing market, a rich pool of skill, talent, favorable business environment, and serves a global gateway for enterprises. This advantage positioned the UK as a prime location for business growth. So whether you are a seasoned business owner seeking new horizons or determined startup founders contemplating UK as the business space or an individual with the dreams of running your business in this vibrant economy, this webinar is specially crafted for you. So I invite you to actively engage take notes, prepare your questions, and together we will unlock the potential that the UK market has for your business. Throughout this session, I encourage you to have an active participation. Please feel free to leave your questions in the question answer session, and we'll be able to answer that. So without further ado, let's begin the session. Give me a moment as I share my presentation with you. And I will need a confirmation if you can see that, okay? All right. Is everybody able to see my presentation here? Right. So in the very first beginning, thank you very much for the confirmation. And I already see um, questions pouring in as fantastic. Um, uh, I've been asked about the UK Innovator visas, the self-sponsorship visas, uh, etc. Yes, we will be we will be speaking about these categories here. And it's it's amazing to know that you know uh, the participants have done a bit of their research. They are kind of aware, but for the people who are joining us for the first time, and you know, it's your first kind of a. Uh, um, a, 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 a time that you've taken out to understand, we will still run through with you uh, with why why UK is a um, why UK is, is 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 the right kind of a destination for your business. So let's let's get into what are the typically top reasons for popularity of UK. Of course, it's an easiest place to set up and run a business. And it really is very quick to incorporate your company in the UK, um, register with the HMRC, and and you know get your businesses up and running. It's as less as in two weeks you should have your business up and running. So, 
So you can plan your your start time in the UK in terms of your work, etc. Of course, UK is a world leader in innovation. There are about 20,000 tech companies uh, start up in 2022. Even in a situation like COVID, 67% of an SME employers generated profits or surplus in their last financial year. It has an international competitive tax environment. For everybody who needs to know more about the taxation policies in the UK, please feel free to visit our YouTube channel. Uh, we actually have been speaking to a lot of uh, international tax um, companies, accounting firms, and they are based in the UK and they do a lot of advisory work. And there's a lot of insights that we have shared uh, on our um, YouTube channel with the accounting firm that we were speaking to. They were very experienced and there's a lot of insights with the different aspect of taxation in the UK. So feel free it, because it's a subject in itself and uh, the, the, the YouTube video is about about more than 45 minutes for you to go through uh, the in-depth of taxations. Um, the stable regulatory environment and sometimes you know when as an entrepreneur you're trying to make this decision you want to tick box that you know the, the place just not appeals to your business it just not only provides opportunity for the businesses to grow but it should also be conducive for the family members um, the last thing you don't want is you know you set up there the business doing well but then the kids have to move out to different countries to um, upgrade their qualifications what about the social environment etc so I think you can tick box all of that it appeals to the families it appeals for the business it appeals for the young families having kids and looking to complete their graduations or masters etc of course, UK is the seventh strongest passport with a free healthcare and, and, and a social safety net. So if you're an entrepreneur who would want to experiment, try, but are worried, in UK you're not because there's so much of social safety net being provided in terms of state pension, council tax benefits, housing benefits, etc. Not that you would want them, but you know, you're not worried because there's a fallback plan available. And, 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 and the government's there to take care of um, those requirements. If you look into historically the success that businesses have seen in the UK and, and the position that they are currently, I was recently speaking to London Chamber of Commerce and, and they said that there's almost one in four people entering the UK are from India and they are business owners that speaks volume because times have changed where you know india was only looked upon that okay if there's somebody from india it must be for tourist reasons or the kids must maybe coming just to complete their post graduation or they, they then they changed where kids are now going also for undergrad kids are going for schooling as well now so so you so india's um the way they perceive UK is changing, and especially the business owners. Um, 1.5 million people of Indian heritage live, work, and run businesses in the UK. I'm sure many of you have friends and relatives already in UK. Would you want to chime in? Yes, if you have friends and relatives in the UK and are running successful businesses, uh, you can. Uh, type in the chat box as yes you do have connects there and you agree that uh, they, they, they've been able to do this successfully in the UK so it's not very complex unlike that you have in USC you have different geographies you have to be mindful of the law in that particular geography so if you're registering a company in New York uh, you need to be complying with regulations there if you're registering in uh, California you need to have a different uh, laws that you have to comply with is fairly simple when it comes to UK in the light. There are a few names that we've listed here which have been very, very successful as a startup. They're growing up and, and uh, their co-founders and founders are from different countries, including that of India. So you see some familiar names here. 
Of course, in the beginning of this conversation, we have listed the different industry which has prospects, particularly AI, cybersecurity, fintech, food and drink. To me personally, if anything that you're manufacturing in India, any goods and services that you are um, manufacturing in India or, or servicing from India, uh, it has an advantage to have a marketing uh, position in the UK or an office in the UK that can help the business to grow uh, faster. So you see there are immigrants and co-founders to the UK's fastest growing business come from 29 different countries. Um, these are some of the statistics that help you to understand the the growth of the top companies and within that as well you see a uh, lot of uh, foreign born co-founders some of them are unicorn startups by now and uh, and the statistics speaks volume about the opportunities that uk offers to such businesses these are some of the familiar names and 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 pictures that you see up over here and and uh, when the picture speaks for itself, uh, you have the Steel King, Lakshmi Mittal is on this list. You have Anil Agrawal, who is the mining baron. And you have a lot of high profile people now in the UK. And, and they're not really only restricted to business. They're literally in most of the industries, in a in lot of other aspects of the UK's economy um, that you see there. Of course, we all know that the political leader, uh, Mr. Rishi Shonak, the Prime Minister, is himself having a lot of... Uh, um, he agrees that there's a lot of potential between UK and India to work together. And I think this is, this is huge uh, from the business perspective to get a support from the leader of, the, of that country to, to set themselves up. And, um, also, if you're following up with the recent news, uh, by end of this month, there's going to be the trade agreement finally getting signed. So there are news around the trade agreement also getting up and running. We see the huge contribution of Indian uh, doctors and nurses to the NHS. Almost about 32,000 NHS staff are of Indian origin. They have been recognized. Um, they have also been a significant contribution being made to the UK's legal system. And as I said, whether it's press, media or any other industry, uh, including the celebrities that you see from the televisions, uh, etc., they, they all have been uh, doing wonders in the UK. So these are again a list uh, quickly to go through what are the popular business, because sometimes I've been asked uh, what is working well in the UK. Uh, so these are some of the very popular businesses that you see. Of course, Indian restaurants doing well, and it's a very, very proud uh, uh, statement that we make at Smart Move to UK, where we've assisted uh, companies from India, especially from the hospitality, who now have footprints in the UK. And it's really a moment of proud for us as well when we see that they are they're doing well. You can find uh, details about this uh, companies uh, that we've assisted. It's there on our company's website, also on our social media handles, including uh, press coverages where uh, our work has been recognized for taking these companies to the UK. Uh, we've been assisting various industries, right from say prescription glass to gems, jewelry, including the list that you see up over here. Uh, we have competency to assist all these companies who wanted to set their footprints up in the UK. Also, at times, I've been asked, uh, we, a lot of business owners, of course, would do their research depending upon the product and services that they wish to offer in the UK, but um, still there's some recommendation that we have in terms of which are the best places to start a business. Of course, everybody knows London would be the go-to place. Uh, there's all the action happening there, but nevertheless, um, Oxford, Leeds, Bristol, Edinburgh, Cambridge cannot be overruled in terms of when you want to start business. And, and I've said this in past as well in a lot of my YouTube videos, also my conversation with the authorities that we had uh, we do a lot of conversation with the different 
um, aspects of immigration and with uh, very experienced people around and and there we had agreed that sometimes you know when um, you would want to set a footprint you can actually start from places outside London and and once you gain momentum once you are able to establish yourself then you can make that transition to the London so you could have an eventual goal to be in London uh, but you can always start with uh, places outside and and then lead yourself to London. So um, getting back to where we why we were here and what is it that how do we understand what are the different options available, what are the different routes available. Uh, I will quickly go through the non-business routes first of all. So uh, you are acquainted and, and it helps you to distinguish between the non-business route and the business routes and, and why therefore you have to pick uh, the one that we would have subsequently if you're looking to set your business up. So most popularly we do know about the student visas, somebody who's trying to upgrade their qualifications in the UK uh, can take up this route to enter. One can study for undergraduate, postgraduate or PhD courses. Um, so this is a popular route. There's been some changes that's been happening since the last few months under this category, the major change that's happening is that not allowing the, the dependents to join in come January 2024. So um, the objective is that you're going to study and, and you have to complete your academic qualifications and, and, and come back. So that's the thought process there. Um, you have a skilled worker visas. So if you have a, already a job offer, from a UK based employer, then you can enter in on a skilled worker visa. They're generally granted for three years, five years, sometimes for a year as well, or two years, depending upon the project that the company has and the presence of you as an employee that they need in that country. Um, they offer you the COS, so the company has to be registered for a sponsorship license, subsequently offering you a COS, and, and then you can apply. Um, you also have a category for healthcare uh, worker visas. I think a lot of people hearing about the healthcare worker visa, it's gaining popularity. There's, as I said, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, opportunity available for our healthcare sectors, and therefore you will see a lot of uh, job offers and NCOS been issued by healthcare companies in the UK, uh, which allows the employee to enter you have global talent visa, visas, which is suitable for exceptionally talented individuals uh, in art, science and technology. You need to prove in your talent. There are set criteria. Uh, again, a separate video on global talent visas. It's a very individual category of application and, and little away therefore for the business perspective. And of course, you have a high potential visas, which is suitable for the graduates from top, top global uh, universities to enter the UK. So these were the non-business visa routes and coming to the business visa routes. Uh, and, and I already have questions around asking on what are what more details on those categories here. So UK expansion worker visa is, is one category of uh, application that you can do as business owners. If you already have an established business and, and you have a senior employee in your mind, a senior again does not mean has to be very uh, aged or has to be for a very long term, but somebody who is capable of uh, making decisions, somebody who's capable of um, running um, the operations for your company in the UK and, 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 and has that set skills can be constituted as a senior employee. So a business UK expansion worker visa is, is something that got substituted from the sole representative visas. So again, if you're following the UK immigration, the uh, sole representative visa category was a category that allowed one of the representative from the existing business to enter the UK um, and, and help the company to set up a branch or a subsidiary in the UK. That 
uh, has got abolished on 11th of April 2022 and it's been replaced by UK expansion worker visas. It has its advantage, the UK expansion worker visas now don't restrict you from just uh, allowing one person to enter in. You can, you can have a team of members, maximum up to five employees who can enter at one given point of time under this category. Um, this is non-settlement, but it allows companies to test waters. It also allows you to switch into a settlement route. So should your company see the momentum, should your company, um, you, you know, when you're entering UK, you're thinking that there's a prospect, you're thinking that there's an opportunity, you're thinking you've done a market research and, and it gives you a time to test waters. Once you're sure about this working for you and for your business, it does allow you then to switch from the expansion worker visas to a skill worker visas and, and then you could have a presence for a longer time in the UK um, and also your employees can remain in with your company for a longer duration. That could be one way of getting into the UK under the UK expansion worker visas. The other one is the UK sponsor license. So you can invest in the business in the UK and self-sponsor yourself or you could have a company which is already in existence you could set up your operations in the UK, register with the Home Office for sponsorship license and then sponsor your team members, including the owners of your company, to enter the UK. So we're breaking this down. I know it's a bit overwhelming. We're trying to make this easy. The first step will be is to incorporate your company in the UK. And you can do that, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, that it's very easy to incorporate a company in the UK, but we also need to appoint a British citizen or an ILR holder as your employee who could act as an authorizing officer who will be authorized to uh, to issue the COS who will be answerable to the Home Office with regards to your sponsorship license. And there's a list of uh, duties, responsibilities of an issuing um, issuing officer, which which is uh, which we have a lot of information on our website again, on our social media handles as well as on our blogs. Feel free to read into that there. The next step will be is to apply for a sponsorship license with the HEM office, and once you've been approved, granted the sponsorship license, then you can move your team members to the UK, your business associates to the UK, and, and they can start working uh, uh, for the for your company. So this is UK sponsor license, uh, which is getting popular nowadays. We have a lot of companies. In fact, uh, there was an article just day before yesterday with the uh, Mint in India, which stated the statistics regarding the number of companies from India particularly who are uh, entering the UK under the self-sponsorship route. Uh, including my firm, we do quite a lot of applications from all over India and, and other countries as well, where we're helping companies to register in the UK as well as apply for sponsorship license. The other category which I was also being uh, asked about in the, in the very beginning of my um, presentation is the innovator visas or the startup visas. So uh, there has been a change in the name and then they have abolished the startup visas now. So it's called as a founder innovator visas, which is again the elements of innovator visas itself. You need to have a business idea which is innovative, viable and scalable. You have to meet all these requirements for you to qualify under the innovator visas. Most important, you have to receive an endorsement. So here the first step is you have a business idea, which is innovative, viable and scalable. You put them on the paper, you have a business plan in place, you've done your projections, you know what, you've done your markets research, your market studies, and, and you added that all in the application. You send it out to an endorsing body. Um, there are endorsing bodies which have been listed 
their nursing body would do an assessment. If they have any query, it's conversational. They come back to you. They ask you questions. There's been a bit of a discussion till they agree and, and they approve of your business ideas to be qualified under this category. Once that's done, they give the endorsement, which is the approval for you to allow allow for you to allow you to enter the UK. So again, there's no minimum investment requirement, and you can start your business in the UK under this category. There are pros and cons on why um, one should or, or what what is it that you should be aware of when you are entering into an innovator. You need to know that you will be assessed so and uh, there will be an endorsing body who will be monitoring your progress to ensure that you know your business is scaling and subject to that happening is how you get your extensions uh, and i think somewhere you know as an entrepreneur you're not comfortable with that monitoring you're not comfortable of being asking from you've been asked the question about what's been the progress there so i think somewhere there when when that strikes in it's a bit discouraging from the uh, entrepreneur to sign in under this category but if you're aware of it and, and you're fine about it then go for it i mean you can apply under this category here uh, and, and go through with this so this been the popular and i think questions are popping up there's quite a lot of questions popping up and uh, if you can just give me a moment, I am almost uh, almost um, going to my next slide and perhaps in my next slide, you will find those answers. If you don't stay tuned, we will be answering that as, as we've agreed. Um, we, 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 we will try to answer all that queries that you've raised up in your, uh, in your question answer session here. So when you are expanding to the UK, um, we can be your global partners here. We have a lot of experience, expertise. Again, social media is again a vouching factor for uh, for the for the for the work that we do here. We are highly rated immigration law firm. I myself am a qualified solicitor from the UK. I've been advising uh, on UK immigration and nationality laws for more than fifteen years now. I've represented businesses from 26 plus countries, my clients based in USA, East Africa, Germany, Europe, uh, in, in Middle East as well, within India, a lot of places. Um, we have four offices and about thousands of success stories. We have near to perfect uh, social media score rates here, which you can see on Facebook, Google. We're members of the Law Society. Uh, we ranked in by Post School Legal, member of Immigration Legal Practitioners Association in the UK as well. I'm being featured in BBC World News in, in uh, the different media houses in India and as well in other countries as well. Um, all of this can be found on our company's website. The kind of companies that we've assisted, we've literally assisted companies from gems, jewelry, IT, um, coaching management, uh, we've, we've got from heavy engineering product, fire safety, restaurants and hospitality, pharmacy, API. I mean, most of the companies, most of the industries, uh, we, we have represented them successfully and, and they're now in the UK. You can again, see those case studies, um, testimonials of the clients, success stories, uh, and all the challenges that they would they had and then how we as a firm overcame that and, and successfully represented. You could see all of that in our social media hand, handles. I encourage if you are looking to go to UK, you can follow us on all our social media handles. We have a lot of updated information about uh, the the rules that change the policies uh, which are changing and that may impact your decision there so how do we work at smart move to uk we do a smart pre-screening uh, as a first step we understand on what is your requirements what are your objective what life plan strategize 
funding, finances, everything up over there. So we take a lot of aspects into consideration. We review your documentations, your paperwork, we complete applications, we do representations, we guide you, assist you at every step, including providing you in-country support, which is which is the reason why we are the most preferred partners for most of the businesses who are looking to enter the UK. Uh, they are they are amazed by the support that Smart Move to UK can extend, the kind of knowledge that we have uh, for and, and the experience that we hold has been of a uh, of lot of assistance to a lot of companies here. And this is our presence in India. So we have our offices in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, um, and these are our contact uh, information. Of course, you have our office contact numbers, which are there on our company's website. Uh, you can reach out to us here on this number as well. So, um, so in the end, before I, uh, before I uh, answer these questions, I would want to make a quick announcement as we conclude this enlightening journey through the vast realm of business opportunities in the UK. Let me leave you with this thought. The UK market is a canvas awaiting the strokes of your entrepreneur vision and with right guidance and strategy, success is not a distant dream, but a tangible reality. Each case study we have explored has found a remarkable growth and success that UK has offered. Their journey was shaped by vision, a plan, and the right partners to navigate through the nuances of expansion. Now it's your turn to take the reins of your business journey and script your success story. The Smart Move to UK stands ready to be that indispensable partner in your entrepreneurial voyage. We are here to guide you through every step of the process, providing the expertise, insights, and support needed to transform your business dreams to a thriving venture. So here's the moment to act. Take that first step towards achieving your aspiration. You had already registered. I'm sure you made a plan from the questions that you're asking. I'm, I'm very sure you are determined to take your business to the UK and we'll be happy to assist you we are offering an exclusive opportunity to all our esteemed participants today for a limited time where we extend about 10 percent of discount on our professional fees to represent you for the next 10 days so this is a gesture to show our commitment to success and to encourage you to make that pivotal role all you need to do is you have to whatsapp us on the number which is given in the screen and you have to write your name down that you've attended and we will be able to offer you uh, the offering that we just announced to the participant if you sign in, in within the next seven days to start your process to enter the uk let me share my screen once again to to show you the uh, the contact number where you can send us the message and you can just allow me a moment as I share the screen and you can SMS us there So that's on your screen here. There's a number that you see. If you could just SMS your name and say you're ready to start, um, you can be availing the 10% discount on our professional fee to represent you. But you need to act within the next seven days. Uh, there wouldn't be any request that they will be able to accommodate if it is after the seven days period. So thank you very much for being a part of this webinar and now over to what we had promised uh, to answer the questions that you have. Somebody in the chat also inquiring if they can send it on the numbers published on company's website, yes? Yes, you can do that as well. You can share uh, your interest 
on the company's website, uh, the number that you see on the company's website as well. And we will be able to take in your request for the next seven days. So uh, interesting questions up over here um, regarding the expansion. The first question definitely about the UK innovator visas and self-sponsorship. I have explained already uh, the difference between the innovator visa and the self-sponsorship. Um, innovator visas, what is non-negotiable is the idea of business has to be very, very innovative. Whereas in a self-sponsorship, it could be your existing business, uh, which is which is up and running currently, that can be um, that can be taken to the UK here. So thank you very much um, that you've joined us all the way from Saudi Arabia. We've, we've got a lot of clients in Saudi Arabia and we've assisted them uh, in setting their companies up in the UK. Definitely will be able to assist you as well in this process. Is there any investors who would help us to set up the business there? Um, interesting question. Uh, <clears throat> I will share my experience with you and because this is a very good question that you raised in it. Thank you very much for asking this. So about four or five years back, I had four entrepreneurs who come to me and they are into app development, you know, the, the mobile app development and uh, a very small startup, uh, but doing well, reasonable well in India and they entered the UK. Uh, once they were in the UK, uh, about last year or so, they got about 22 million pound funding. So the idea is that, you know, if you've positioned, you're incorporated in the UK, you have an idea, you've done some bit of a work in the UK, it is possible. Um, also, it's possible nowadays, I, I had just been to a tech spark event in Bangalore um, and, and I had seen that there's a lot of funding available by uh, venture capitalists and uh, in investment funding companies who are willing to support if it's a great business idea. So I don't see capital as a challenge in the given times that there's so many um, opportunities available um, to get some kind of funding. You may, I'm not promising, but you may reach out to our office. Maybe you can leave a contact details and uh, we can try to see in our network if there could be somebody who's interested to uh, to invest, but there's no commitment. As an immigration lawyer, uh, we generally don't tend to find an investor for a client, but if there's anything, we can try to look into it. Um, if you need any support, thank you very much for another very interesting question for the issuing officer. Uh, yes, but we can find ways on how you can, um, whatever help you need to incorporate companies or uh, to set up your team in the UK. Uh, we've been for a very long period of time, as I said, we've been advising for uh, for very many years now, and, and we have good connects in the UK where we can we can sort of you know try to help you to to get uh, whatever assistance we can uh, for you to be up and running in the UK. Um, the next question I have is the innovative idea question to say that, you know, how can we give you an innovative idea? I don't think any immigration firm, sorry, sir, can give you an innovative idea. The idea has to be by the applicant. The idea has to be uh, something that you are, because as an immigration lawyer, I can I can help you to complete application and put forth your thoughts and and to an extent with my experience and expertise, um, tell you on what can make your application stronger. But the idea has to be idea has to be yours. Uh, to 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 fundamentally make an application, and this is again a very interesting question that I get: is uh, what should be that idea? Well, that can be uh, that has to be very individual and very uh, very your own sort of thought here. Um, 
There is a request for a consultation. Um, yes, you can book a consultation online. You can call our offices for consultation. I uh, will be personally be happy to connect with you as well. But all our consultations are paid consultations and uh, uh, there's a very nominal fee to connect to me uh, for, for doing a preliminary assessment to find out if there's a potential to, to uh, make a valid application. We'll be happy to do that. It's about 45 minutes to an hour for a consultation. Um, the next question that I have is how do I set up my business in the UK? Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, for asking this question. And as you know, we've done this in the slide, but I will repeat again. The first step will be is to incorporate your company in the UK. So you register with the company house in the UK. Uh, you also register with the HMRC. Uh, you, you, you open your, your bank accounts. Uh, if you are going to hire talent from outside uh, UK and, and you're going to bring in people from uh, outside UK to, to, to start your operations in the UK, then you have to apply for a sponsorship license as well. So that would be the process. I hope, I hope that this conversation has been of help. I'm still receiving um, queries and questions. I will try to answer them uh, individually through emails. If you've left in your email and, and your details with us in your registration form. And, uh, and I hope that this conversation has been of help to you. And uh, we hope to be a part of your journey to set yourself up in the UK. And we hope to uh, represent and assist you in the next seven days, if possible. And it will be lovely to see you all uh, setting and, and progressing and, and finding success in the UK. Thank you so very much for being a part of this conversation and a part of this presentation here. I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.